Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the Internet's most passionate wine program. And this is an epic episode. Not only are we at the most badass wine bar in New York City, Terroir, not only is Mott holding the camera for the first time ever, so there will be movement, not only are we right next to a stove, so Mott is gonna be ridiculously sweaty by the end of this episode, but I am here with an actual queen. The German wine queen is in the house. You brought me a present. That's your real one. That's, this is mine. So I'm gonna put it on for the episode. Is that right? Or is that how you do it? Or is this the one? I'm not. Yes, I do. I'm a little Bacchus action. Put put yours on. Very nice. Okay, good. I'm feeling good about this. Yes, it is. And uh, you're visiting. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are, what's your name, what you do, why in the heck are you the German wine queen, and uh, and what we're gonna be focusing on today. How many years has there been a wine queen? Six years. You need me up? Hers? You need to move up? Her mic? Yeah? Up? Mott is making, you know, demands. That's how he rolls. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So, how, how many years has there been a wine queen? Uh, for 60 years. Six zero? Yes. It's really, really A big deal. And how does one become the wine queen? There's an election every year. Okay. And, um, 13 girls are taking part, 13 young women are taking part in this election. And so like, it's even on TV in Germany. Yes. On television? It's on television. Okay. And, um, we should have such a good time. You have to go to all wine, you have to make a wine tasting. And of course, you must be spontaneous and stuff like so that. So, pretty smart, and you have to know wine to win. Yes. You can't, you have to know wine. Yes. Have to. Is there a blind tasting portion? So you beat out the other 12 girls in the blind tasting part and won this championship. Oh, uh, well, it sounds really hard when you're talking like that, but um, we were friends, you know? You were friendly with them. Yes. But at the end of the day, you wanted to beat, up, beat those girls up and win. Let's be honest. Now, okay, now, you're wine queen for a year. What does the German wine queen do? I am traveling through Germany. Okay. Several, um, yes, several places, and I'm traveling um, to several countries of the world. So I have been in China, I have been in Japan, in India, um, in Venezuela, for example, Finland, Sweden. Where are you seeing German Riesling interest spike? Where were you surprised that there was a lot of interest? Here, in Manhattan. In, in Manhattan. Manhattan the U.S. surprised you. Nice. <laughs> so, the U.S. surprised you? Yes, totally, because um, there was so much passion about wrestling. Yep. It was really, really surprising. Are you also a little surprised that we tend to go a little bit towards the sweet stuff, whereas at the homeland there's more dry consumption? Yes, at the homeland, in Germany, we, yes, we also drink sweet wines, but we yeah. drink dry wines. But there's a little more respect for the dry stuff than maybe there is here yes. in the U.S. And what I think it's a pity because the consumers, they, when they search for German wine, they expect the sweet ones. Right. When they want to try one, they don't search in German wine. So. Right. Yeah. Right. What about China, Venezuela? Give us a little insight to what the interest was in those countries. Just Venezuela. beginning? Yeah. Venezuela, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a country. It's, it's really at the beginning because... Um, Did you meet Hugo Chavez? Sorry? Did you get to meet Hugo Chavez? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> he might have been, he might have been no, a reason. No, it was a wine tasting for um, mostly German people who live there. I never got some German people there. Yeah. And it's very just a German wine tasting. It's really, very, very nice. Cool. And also, um, we got some importers from there. Cool. Right. Want to drink some wine? Cool. All right. First wine we have here is the Kloster Eberbach 2007 Steinberg Riesling Trocken. Uh, this wine normally retails for about 30 US dollars. Uh, what do you know about this? What, what, what do you think about this? Um, I think that typical example for German 
dry wines. For German, for really, really nice dry German Riesling. So Klose Eberbach is very, very well known in Germany. The Rheingau is very, very well known for really, really great Riesling wines. Let's talk about the Rheingau. Yeah. Uh, Mott, little zoomy zoom right there. Um, Something that I think is a little underappreciated in the U.S. is how great this area is. Tell us a little bit more insight on the area. Rango is one of the wine growing region in Germany. It's really wrote history. So Rango is the region um, in which first the Riesling was mentioned. Then they let me yeah. just jump in. The first mention of Riesling in Germany was in the Rheingau, so it's got a really traditional place really in the hearts of Germany for sure. Yes. And it's really fun because they have um, a great, great. Uh, how do you call it? Like a site. Site? Um, yes, because Rheingau lies on the Rhine, so the Rhine flows from south to yep. north, except of one place that it flows from the north east to the south, west. east to the west. Yes. Got it. So vineyards of Rheingau are all facing the sun, south. So great wines, great sites. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Are you ready to give this a sniffy sniff? I'm ready. Okay, so let's give it a smell. Steam action, Mott. You are just. This is the bad. I, this is the greatest episode ever. Um, little, little bit of an apple component on the nose. A little green apple. A li- you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what? Maybe because in in the U.S. we smell so much New Zealand. So many about that. So grapefruit. It's not the biggest nose that pops out. But again, everybody's nose and palate is different. She's the queen, so I'm probably wrong. Uh, but I do get I, I do get a little apple. I, there is a little citrus component. I would, for my nose, it wouldn't go totally grapefruit. Fre- the nose is very fresh. You know, just it, it, it makes really you, you want to drink something with that. Too. Think it makes your palate sa- savor. That's a good point. The acidity. Yeah. That's a good, yeah. Let's give it a whirl. But at a wine bar, so no spit bucket. Um, it's elegant. It's very, very elegant. So you feel it's elegant. I feel it's a little light. Just a, a, a little lighter than my palate would like. I like the acidity on the back end, but and I, I like the burst of freshness. Yeah. I like the dryness. It disappears a little bit for me on the finish. You know, it's kind of yes. like. But I think um, it's okay because it's, it's a very, very light wine. It's wanted. This wine does not want to be. Right, very, it's, very strong so you're saying it's not aspiring to be huge. Yes. But, but it's $30. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, fine, it's every day. I mean, I'm not rich like the wine queen. Oh, I can't no. buy $30 Riesling every day. You know, I'm, just, I'm not Mr. Greco over here that owns this wine empire. I can't, I can't afford 30 every day. Okay, that's right. so, so to me, that would be the concern. For the people out there, I would say, you know, it's a, it's a solid Riesling. You know, for my palate, 87, 88 point wine, good wine, I agree. Nice, easy drinking, disappears a little bit on the finish, but at 30 bones, I'd give it a pass, even in front of the queen. So, that, that's my little concern. I can get it. You can see it? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about this. This is fascinating. This is from my home growing, uh, from my home region. So what do we have here? It's um, a Riesling also. Franken? It's from Schmitzkinder, a yep. Stecker Sonnstuhl. And it's what in she a said. And this is a Riesling Spatlesa. Yes, it's, so it's a little, Franken, yeah. So it's a little sweetness. Very, very little. Very little? I'm yes. excited to see that. 25 bones. Now, when Americans see this package, you know what they think? Uh, what? Matus. What? Rosé. That's right. You know, moderate, you know, Mott's a little older than I am, so he remembers Matus and Lancers and putting this in his dorm room and all that stuff. What do you want to tell the public about this shape bottle? We don't see as much of it here in the U.S. What's going on in Germany? Is there a lot of wine being produced in this shape? Um, only in Franconia. It's a bottle you can only find in Franconia. And in this bottle, there are only very, very original wines and wines from very high quality. So you can find there so and wrestling. So the higher end stuff. Yes. So ironically, though you may think of this as a novelty play and as a throwback Portuguese rosé bullcrap stuff, this shape bottle is for the high end. Another, another fascinating thing. I mean, let's really talk. I'm just gonna jump in for a second. Okay. Let's talk about Riesling, especially in the U.S. The most fascinating grape varietal. There's three segments of Riesling. There's the two percent that first get into wine and want to drink it because they think it's sweet. There's the 95 percent of you out there that think it's foofy, foofy girl, not serious stuff. 
And then you've got 3%, I don't know how many are left, I think 3% of like the super nerds, point to that super nerd over there, Mr. Greco, that's a super nerd, okay? Percent of super wine nerds that think it's the greatest thing of all time. We nerd it up, we wanna know it inside out, high acid, best food wines, fascinating varietal. Here's another microcosm of that. This shape tends to make probably 99% of the people think not serious, it's the flip side, it's serious. All right, well let's see how, well, let's see how serious it is. Little for you. Basically, it's about the site. Um, the sun and stool, but it's like a sun stool means sun chair. Sun so chair, it's also got very it. Ma, um, you got the zoom in on the label? Very nice. All right. I like I like the color. Little yeah, cloud, little nice. little cloudy or something, right? Yeah. Or maybe it's just cold. I think it's actually just cold. So forget the cloudiness. All right, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Okay. This background noise is awesome in this episode. But you're hearing us clear, Ma? The Vaniacs are gonna be okay. You guys gonna be okay? They'll be somewhat okay? It's better than no mic. So this has a gorgeous nose. It's typical for Frankelian Riesling. They are, they have another style. They're most of Riesling, Oranga Riesling. They are more earthy. They are know, very earthy. I mean, you know, it smells like goat cheese, like cheese. Yes, yes. Absolutely. So there's a very interesting like cow cheese, goat cheese, not goat cheese, cow cheese, little manure, like earthy tone. There's also an interesting, almost like watermelon rind. Like after you eat the watermelon, what's left, just yeah. the white rind, I get a little bit of that component. A little melon action. All right, let's give it a whirl. What do you think? I like it a lot. Yeah, it's yes. really good. So, what do you think? I agree. I, the minerality of this one is wine is undeniable, but the mouthfeel, it's so yeah. silky on the palate. Yeah. A little hint of sweetness, just enough, like a uh, like a watch it again, uh, just a little hint of sweetness. Tremendous long finish. I almost get like a white licorice component on the back end, like this fascinating like licorice yeah. kind of thing, yeah. or like or or like a, a cove, like this really fascinating li white licorice, acacia covey kind of like medicine-y kind of thing going on on the back end of the finish that I like a lot because it's creamy, it's massively elegant, like just it's a very pretty bottle of wine. The guy who produced this wine is also a very, very nice person. And he's a good human being? Yes. And okay, so I'm going to rate it one point higher, just so you know. Go ahead. <laughs> and he wants to uh, sorry, combine tradition with modern thinking. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this your queen ring? Yeah, it's the Ma, queen get ring. get into the queen ring. I, I just felt we had to mention it. So, he's a modern? No, he's a very traditional winter, but with modern thinking. So he wants to preserve the old school, yes. but what's modern about him? Um, His marketing style or? Of wine making. Okay. So he allows the terroir to speak, but he's willing to play with it enough to accentuate it. Yes, and at the moment the sun is coming up into the winery. Biodynamic a little bit? No. Okay. And he's getting some new aspects, new thinking, and I think it's. Oh, it's the really sun. Different. I'm sorry. Yes. I was thinking you're going with the sun and the moon. His no. sun yes. is getting. Got it. This is a fantastic bottle of Riesling. Let me put it right here. I would score this wine a 91 point Riesling. Probably would have went 90 until I found out he was a very good person. But extremely harmonic is really what comes to mind. Uh, I don't even know if that's a word. But uh, on the palate, just a great elegance. It goes, you know, cradle to grave kind of thing. Like coast to coast on the palate, which I think is fantastic. The acidity is a little low for me. I would, for my, for my palate, a little more acid, and I might have gotten bazonkers here and started like freaking out on people. But it's still extremely solid. I enjoy it, and, uh, and you enjoy it. Mott would probably Mott. I don't know how you're gonna pull this off, but. Mott enjoys it. So it's, it's, it's a win-win-win, so let's move on. 
All right, this is a nice treat. We're going a little old school here. Uh, the Zillikin uh, 93 uh, Sarburger Rausch Riesling Auschlesa 1993 Mott. Uh, and this is not available at this point, but probably go between 50 and 75 bones a bottle. Um, and this is where things start getting interesting. I don't think people realize as a whole, and I think you guys do because I've been talking more and more about it, how well Rieslings can age. And, uh, and uh, I'm excited to see what's going on here. I mean, the color right off the bat looks like a 2009 bottle. I mean, it's a, you know, great color. What, what, what do you got? What are your two cents, Queen, on this? Great here. Healthy grapes, lots of acidity, so perfect for aging. Yep. Um, okay, the winter, I think, winemaker is well known here. Yes. And uh, South of Arouge, a very, very famous site, very, very steep slopes, facing south, and um, deep on its late, so the roots have to go very, very deep in time, in that year. We're getting the minerals and the water, and yeah. Let's we'll see what's going on. Cool. Great backdrop to that. Little sniffy sniff action. Sniffy sniff. Now you start getting into the romance of Riesling, right? Now we're getting into burnt tires, little rubber action. Uh, you know, it's starting to take on those aged characteristics on the nose. Almost like a bonfire, little oil, mechanic y kind of car wash thing going on without the bubbles, more like maybe more like a gas station. What are you picking up on the nose? I think it has some some both of me, yes. Walnut. Walnut? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, you are gonna push me to walnut? I think you're I think you're actually right. I think I get walnut. That's a good job. I, I get walnuts. Almost like burnt walnuts, right? Yes. Like if you took walnuts, you know, instead of marshmallows, open up fire, walnuts. Yeah. Interesting. Good call. She drilled that. Yeah, it's actually pretty prominent. Um, cool. Let's give it a whirl. Drop it. It is very smooth. It's a little light. A little light. It's definitely lost its acidic edge at this point. It's more, you know, it's it's over its teenage years. It's like a, it's like when you don't go to clubs anymore and you go to lounges, right? It's like you're just, you know what I mean? That's what this wine's doing. It's not going to clubs anymore. No more raves. No more like ooh ooh ooh. No, no more like glow sticks in your mouth, Riesling. This is more like hanging out at a lounge with a nice bottle of bubbly. That's where this wine's at. It's in a more sophisticated place. Yes, I think, I think the city is snacking a little bit. Yeah, it, but when you get sophisticated, you're not that cool anymore. You're 28, you're not as cool anymore. <laughs> you got to realize that. And this is missing that cool factor a little bit, a little bit of that acid yeah. that I think we would have responded really well to. However, but I think for go ahead. this vintage, it's a great wine. Yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, this wine is 15 years old, white, Riesling, and still holding up, more than drinkable, a lot of apple, right? Like baked apple flavors coming through on the palate. It's a good wine. You know, 89 to 91 is what I would score it, just for battle variation. SS Chris, don't bust my chops. I like it, it's an apple play. I get a little pear. Juicy. Juicy? Yeah, I think it is juicy. It's, it's actually it's quite refreshing. Yes, it is. Yeah. Queen. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure for me, really. What, uh, what else do you have? You got anything else you want to talk about? Um, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions, but you as a guest have to ask the Vayner Nation a question. I so right. anything you want, question of the day, fire away. It's a fair question. It is a wine show. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. You? Oh, can I wear the real one? Oh, baby. Oh, it doesn't fit in my head. Ouch. That hurts. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.